The number one need of a male, write this down, is sex. Write that down. You need to know that. The number one need of a male is sex. I didn't say the number one mean, need of a man. Because a man is spirit. A man needs God. But the number one need of a male is sex. Why? Because the male is designed by God to be a progenerator. That means a male is always full of seed. His purpose in life is to provide seed. That's why every male right now is carrying half a billion sperms in his loins right now. He's a seed carrier. So his number one purpose in life is to provide the genes or the generations or the generations, the genes for the generations. So a male is designed by God to produce generations. That's why when God wanted to create a nation, he never went to a woman. He went to a man because a man carries the generations. He said, Abraham, a nation shall come from you and Sarah will incubate the nation. So the man needs sex. The man doesn't want sex. He needs sex. Say he needs it. Men don't want sex. They need sex. A need is something that helps you function. A car doesn't want gasoline. It needs gasoline. If you don't have gasoline in the car, it stops functioning. A need is not a want. Men do not want sex. They need sex. Don't look at me so funny, lady. Say hallelujah anyhow. I'm trying to give you some education so you don't get in trouble. Now because a man, number one need is sex because he's driven by the divine purpose to produce seed. That's why men have no cycles. A man have no menstruation cycle. He's always ready. All the time, every day, all day, anytime, anywhere. The guy's ready. All the men say right on. Don't look so quiet on me now. Help, come on, brothers. Help me out here. Help me out here now. So you see, a, a man ain't got to build up to sex. He's just ready. And he ain't got no cycle. So he's ready even when you are not ready. Creates a problem. Now most women who are married, especially you Christian women, <laughs> Some of y'all think that your husband got a demon. What's wrong with you, man? You had it last night, this morning again. What's wrong with you? And yesterday you had it, day before. You're sick, man. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to take you to Pastor Matthew and cast out this nymphomaniac demon. You are full of the devil. And so, you take your husband down to the, to, the, to the office, you make an appointment to see Brother Matthew, and say, Pastor, my husband have a demon. He's a nymphomaniac. He won't leave his hands of me. You got to pray for him. Cast the demon out. And Brother Matthew says, I got the same demon. That ain't no demon. All the men say, Amen. All the men say, leave the demon alone. Your husband is not sick he's normal and if anybody here want to be too spiritual any brother want to be too spiritual if you don't have the same desire you need prayer now the question is why is a woman's need not sex a woman's number one need is not sex now she she likes sex. Sex is good for a woman. And she enjoys it. But it's not her motivational need. A woman's number one need is not sex. Write it down. Her number one need is affection. <laughs> affection is not sex, brothers. As a matter of fact, sex is the result of affection to a woman. If you give her affection, you'll get your need met. <laughs> now some of you ladies need some help you go to bed in the night you got on all this clothes socks long mitten dress ham on your head you got wrapped up all around your body the guy got to fight to find something I mean you got to stop this all the men are shouting now boy Ladies, you want to be a good wife? Make it easy. Go with nothing on. Say, good night, baby. Come on to bed. I'm talking to wives now. If you ain't married, this ain't for you. Some men feel like they are raping their wives. Ladies, you ever wonder why Paul says, 
<laughs> your body's not your own. Because sometimes you don't feel like it. The problem is he always feels like it. Now women have four seasons. Summer, winter, autumn, and spring. So men, you got to be sensitive. When it's winter, leave her alone. Buy her flowers, kiss her, hug her, but don't touch her. That's winter. You're out in the cold, brother. Control yourself. Right, mama? You're acting so spiritual now. You know it's true. When it's winter time, baby, you don't want nobody to touch you right now. It's winter. Then there's autumn. Autumn means that things begin to change, begin to warm up a little bit. But you still ain't interested in right now. Then spring comes. Spring means everything's coming back to life, baby. You, you just get it on here. Then summer comes. Oh, it's so hot. She grabs you in the bed. Come on, yeah. And then there's winter again. You're out in the cold again. So, men, we got to be sensitive. Even though you're ready all the time, she ain't. A good marriage is built on a man who understands sensitivity and a woman who understands the need of a man. Now, I'm going to tell you something, ladies. A man doesn't want sex. I like what Paul says. Paul says, don't you be spiritual now, ladies. I'm talking about going on missions. I'm going to fast and pray for three weeks. I'm going to just, what? The Bible says, don't you go and fast and pray unless you first ask, not God, but your husband. So you can't tell your husband, the Lord told me to fast. Uh-uh. You got to tell God, your husband told you you could. That's what the scriptures teach. And then the Bible says, and after you finish fasting, after he allows you to go and fast and pray, it says, hurry back to the bed. Why? Because Sister Mabel in the church will provide what he needs if you don't. Don't look at me funny. While you out having missions, someone on a mission with your husband. Because he doesn't want it. He needs it. Oh, I got four more to give you, but the time's gone. Okay. Let me just close by saying this, ladies and gentlemen. Marriage is an honorable thing. But the bed is undefiled. You keep it pure by understanding the needs.